Your Army service forces come to you today from inside a maintenance artillery shop on Guam. This is where they overhaul, check, and repair artillery weapons. Guns that include the 40 millimeter, the 90 millimeter, and the highly 155 millimeter long tom. The men who work here are part of a medium maintenance ordnance company, a mobile organization that can move right out in the field with the troops and perform its mission not too far behind the front line. But here on Guam, the men have built themselves a semi-permanent setup. Non-commissioned officer in charge is Tech Sergeant Thomas G. Flanders of New Haven, Connecticut. Sergeant, this is quite an elaborate setup you have here. Uh, yes, we're quite proud of it. The engineers built the frame of the building and we did practically everything else ourselves. Sergeant Kalesha of Bridgeport, Connecticut, and Corporal Elkin of Moodus, Connecticut, uh, really helped to get this work underway. Well, what about that big overhead crane up there? You must have had quite a job with that. Uh, yes, we did. We knew that we'd have to have some method of handling those big gun tubes, so we decided to construct the overhead crane. How did you do that? We got two big 37-foot-long I-beams from the Navy that they used for standard ship repair. We cut them down to fit the width of our own building. We use them as the cross girders. We got the rails from an old abandoned Jap railway here on the island. The wheels that turn the pulleys are a conglomeration of bicycle and jeep wheels that we salvaged from our own scrap pile. But come over here and I'll show you just how it works. Right now we are getting ready to remove a 5 ton 155 millimeter gun tube. The tube alone weighs 5 tons, so as you, you can see we really need this heavy equipment with which to handle it. Moving over to the big 155 millimeter gun, we find Sa Sergeant Francis Quinn of Arlington, Massachusetts, going all over the piece with an air hose. That's what are you doing with that hose, Sergeant? One of the first things we have to do in inspecting these babies is to get rid of the excess road dust from the gun cradle. There's no better way and quicker way than blowing it out. Well, what do you do after that? We generally keep the gun here in the shop for about four days. During that time, we check the bore, look over the firing mechanism, realign the servicing gear, and really give her a thorough going over. We're even making a slight modification while she's in the shop this time. You can go over there to the welding section to see just how that is done. Just across the aisle in the welding section, we find Sergeant Joe Sabota of Wallet, Texas, hiding beneath the welding hood and bending over the trail of the gun where he is working with his arc welder. Sergeant, just what sort of a modification are you making on this gun? It's a very minor one, but we are changing the position of the lifting handles on the gun spade, that part which anchors the gun to the ground. We do that to facilitate the removal when the gun crew puts the piece into firing position. And how do you go about doing that? It's very simple. All I have to do is to check the position of the new handles go in, then each hitch has to be welded to the main part of the gun spade. I've got to get back to the job now, so they might need this gun in a hurry some one of these days. And so we wind up this short radio tour through a maintenance artillery shop here on Guam. Your Army Service Forces has brought its wire recorder mic right inside this ordnance installation to report some of the activities of service troops here in the Pacific. This is Major Henry Annemeyer speaking. Your Army Service Forces returns to Mutual in the United States.